So welcome everyone. Thanks for uh, attending the cohort number two. Um, oh, I don't need a selfie. Um, <laughs> so look today, uh, like firstly, like I'm super stoked you're all here, uh, especially to all the new people who have come in uh, to my team who are going to come along for this mm -hmm. ride for the first time. And I'll explain to everyone here why they, my team's all here. Um, and then a special thank a shout out to the guys who were from the first cohort who have come back and there's a few more of them coming back next week as well. They just couldn't make it this week. Um, there's a, a few people here who are in the last cohort who ha helped us design and build this whole product, I guess. And so uh, you'll get to know them as we go along. But I can't give enough thanks to these guys because they actually helped us turn this into what it is today, uh, which I'm pretty proud of. And it should be a fun, should be a fun process. So. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, we're going to share a bit of a PowerPoint, take you through some stuff. Today's a very introduction sort of day. I'll do a little bit of it. I'll hand over to Nate, uh, who's going to show you some more, which will be a lot about what our homework is. Um, we'll do some introductions so everyone gets to know everyone. And really, today's session is uh, introduction, so you know who each other is. There's a lot of people on the school, and you're all going to get to know each other pretty well over the next 12 weeks. If I know anything about the first cohort, uh, everyone got to know each other really well, got to know their business pretty intimately, and are all supporting each other and helping each other grow their own accounts. And so I see that happening again with this group, um, but only to a larger scale because there's, I don't know, like 45 people in this group. There's only like 20 people on the call, but there's about, I don't know, 30 in that, uh, that office of mine over there on it as well. So we're all going to get behind it. So I'll get started. I'll share my screen. Give me a second. I'll figure out how to do this. Okay, that's all coming through. Okay, can someone yell out? I can't see you, so just yell out. <laughs> nah, no one can see it. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you. Okay, so all good. All good. I can't see you because we're on one screen. I need to figure out a better solution for this in New York. Um, so if you have anything, please just shout out. Like one one rule that I had with the other guys is don't worry about it. Like talking over each other just yell it out as the idea comes we can sort through it as we go if you and, and so when i'm speaking and i ask you questions please like respond verbally uh to it um and if you really can't do that then put it in the chat because sometimes it'll pop up so anyway like i said welcome to the cohort we're going to start with introductions to begin with we all need to get to know each other um so we'll start there so first of all there's your guides so throughout this process um the three of us are going to take you through this journey. So my name is Stanley, as most of you probably already know, um, and I'm the founder of the Attention Seeker. Um, and I'm gonna, today I'm going to lead you through the first half of it, but also because I can't shut up, I'll talk most of the next 12 weeks, and then Nate and Joni will fight me for opportunities to have a chat as well. But that's me, and I'll hand over to Joni. I'm Joni. I'm the internal content creator at the Attention Seeker. I also um, do a lot of short form video strategy um, where I'll be helpful in the cohort is when you are trying to execute short form video. And then Nate. Is it muted? We're on. Hi, I'm Nate. I'm a head of strategy. I will be helping you with your strategy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. It's <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's very succinct. You said All be right, quick. So, so if you need anything from like a you know, like we are the ones leading this today, even though my entire team is part of this and I'll explain why shortly, but if you need anything, you can refer to us and the fastest way to get to us is through the community pages, which we'll show you shortly. And Vanessa will be manning those. So um, she will be able to get you into contact with us at any stage, but I'm pretty sure all of you have got my email anyway. So if you need anything, contact us directly. Also, and then the next can bit, just, can, oh, yeah. I, can I just make this people sending questions right now that couldn't get in? You can keep on sending your questions and I'll be responding as we are going through the session as well. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. So, um, so in this particular cohort, we're going to run it. Well, we're running it definitely different to the last one, but we're also running it quite special where um, we, when I say we, myself, Joni and Nate, Nate, learned so much during the first cohort ourselves about our business our process and what we do even though we we're teaching other people what we knew it just taught us so much right and, and most of us can understand that when you teach you end up learning way more uh, than what you already knew so i've invited the entire team along to do this cohort and so for 
two hours out of every Friday, the entire the entire Teams and Seeker team are going to be in this cohort with you guys. And so what I thought would be really good is if we actually split up this cohort into six groups where we're all going to do it as one large group as we go through the cohort, but there's going to be moments when we need to break off and do some brainstorming. And brainstorming with 45 people is pretty hard. So we're going to break up into smaller groups of uh, seven or so, right? And myself, Joni, and Nate, we're still going to be guides, so we're not necessarily in any one of the groups, but we'll jump in between them where we're needed and help. And every group is going to end up with a group leader, okay? And so my team's been briefed. The group leaders are accountable for the clients that are in their cohort. And it's their job to make sure that you have the best experience throughout this process with us and that anything you need, um, you can go to them directly as well. You don't have to come to us. Uh, but also they're kind of like knowing my team and that I've put who I've put in this group leaders. There's going to be some fierce competition on who has the best outcomes for their clients. I can probably tell you that already. Sam and Dania are going to be fighting for every spot. Um, so that's going to be make a much better product for all of you who have come in uh, as attendees as part of this. So I'm going to introduce you to them all. We're starting with Sam. And Sam, if you could, someone get this mic to Sam, if you could quickly introduce yourself and who you are. Hi guys, uh, my name is Sam. I'm an account manager here at the Attention Seeker. Uh, I've worked here for quite a while now, um, head of a group and really excited to be working with you all. Um, I'll be working on my own personal brand uh, in terms of entertainment and comedy on TikTok and Instagram. That's me. Cool. Thanks, Sam. Next up, we have Danya. I look cute. Oh my god, hi guys. My name's Danya. I'm an account manager here at the Attention Seeker. Um, I started shortly after Sam did here. Um, and I'll be working on my own personal brand, Danya. And yeah. Caitlin? I also look great. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Caitlin. I'm also an account manager here at The Attention Seeker. I started, I want to say, six months ago now. I was predominantly in property prior to this, but have always had a passion for marketing, so here I am. Um, and I will be working on my personal brand, sort of that lifestyle content throughout this cohort, and I'm really excited to meet you all individually. Guessing now will be next. Hello everyone, I am now. I'm also an account manager at Taz and I've been here for about three months now. Um, I'm going to be working on my personal brand as well and I do a bunch of music so I'm going to be focusing on that. Now. Hi everyone, I'm Mel. I'm the head of community management here. Um, basically what we do is manage and nurture your communities, I mean brand communities online. And yeah, so I'm wanting to kind of just grow my personal brand and figure out how to build a podcast that I'm currently trying to build. <laughs> yeah. And last but not least. Hey team, I'm Connor. Uh, I'll be working on, oh, sorry, I'm the strategy director here, so really working hand in hand with Nate to help identify uh, routes to achieve your brand objectives. Uh, and I'll be working on Nice Shot, which is an online golf retailer and uh, the way that I pay for my expensive hobby. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. So there's your group leaders. Um, and here are the groups. So my team's seen this for the first time as well. Um, but we've got these six groups that are underneath. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read, we're going to go through each group. We're going to start over at Sam's group and we're going to go up Dal and I'm going to go down. So I'm going to go Dal, Devin, Lee, and then Tonga, Hiram, Jenny. And uh, we're going to introduce ourselves. And so for those of you who aren't already briefed, um, just the same as what the guys did. Who you are, what you do, and uh, what's the brand that you're working on throughout this process? Because for some people, it's your personal brand. For some people, it's your company brand um, and whatever it might be. Just a quick little intro and then we'll, and then we'll move on through. So we're going to start off with Abdel. You can kick us off. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Abdel. Um, I started as an intern here and then they liked me enough to hire me. Um, I'm a social media coordinator for the internal brand and my personal brand is going to be 
just a guy in his early 20s exploring life. I might be a part-time rapper, though. I don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking through that. But yeah, that's me. Thank you. Yo, Devin. Hey, team. I'm Devin. I'm a copywriter and in-house journalist for Taz. I've been here about six months, and I'll be here. Uh, I'll be doing uh, personal brand uh, exploring uh, music and talking about albums and uh, kind of expanding my, my breadth as a music journalist. Thank you. Lee. Hi, everyone. My name is Lee. I am a videographer for The Attention Seeker. And uh, my personal brand is me getting 1% better and getting shredded in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that's nice big. All right, Tonga, over to you. Uh, my name is Tonga. I'm a founder and interior designer at Nest Interiors and Design. Um, we design inside spaces. Um, I'm here to work on my personal brand and um, the brand and the business brand also. Thank you, Ty. Hiram. Hi, my name is Hiram. I run two premium 24-7 gyms here in New Zealand. And so I'm working on the company brand as well as my personal brand. So with the gyms, it'll be the gym focus. And then with my personal brand, it'll be health and fitness. And then a little bit of business focus stuff as well. So Jenny couldn't make it to this first one. She'll be here next week. But Jenny is a mortgage advisor with Vega uh, Mortgages. Um, and she's obviously working on her personal brand as a mortgage advisor. So um, you, you'll all meet her next week. All right, Alicia, over to you. Uh, hey, guys, uh, Alicia here. I'm the operations manager. Um, I've been here, I don't know, from nearly the beginning. Um, what I plan to work on is not limiting myself. Uh, I like to stay behind the scenes and anonymous. So I'm looking to start kind of like a joke meme TikTok account where it's not my face, um, just hiding behind Hedwig. So, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Thanks, Leach. Curls? Kia ora. Uh, my name's Curls. I am a show writer here at The Attention Seeker, and I will be working on my personal brands to increase my TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube pages. And thoroughly excited to get started. Awesome. Maddie. Kia ora team. I'm Maddie. I'm a community manager here at the Tension Seeker and I will be working on my personal brand. I don't I have a fair idea, but I don't really know what it looks like. So I guess that's why I'm here to learn more. Uh, David. Kia ora. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kia ora. Uh, my name's David uh, Mitsuoro. Um I'm related to Stan. He's my uh, awesome cousin. I am one of the uh, video um, editors uh, for Taz, and I'm going to be sharing my um, experiences and my brand, which is um, Pokemon cards and all kind of TCG cards, and also just uh, um, content with my family on sh on different socials. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Um, Next up is Nick, but I don't think Nick is uh, here today, but he will be here uh, from next week. Um, Stan, I'm here. Oh, you are here, Nick. Oh, I didn't I'm see here. you pop in. So, so, oh, sorry, sorry I was uh, just running right, a little bit on, late. Nick, I'll, let, I'll let you go. Sorry, I didn't see you pop in. All good. Uh, uh, my fault for being late. Uh, just trying to get the kids out the door to school. Um, hey, guys, uh, I'm Nick. Uh, uh, head of sales uh, for a company called uh, VidApp, um, and uh, uh, my focus for uh, this cohort is uh, um, really building the VidApp brand. So VidApp, what we do, uh, we build really cool apps uh, for content creators in the health and fitness industry um, by helping them monetize their audience, uh, and that's me. Awesome. Thank you. And Hannah, next. Hi everyone, my name is Hana. Um, I own a company called Blue Wave Ngalmoana, which is a digital media solutions company um, that focuses on Pacific people. Uh, we have a team of 17, one office in Samoa, New Zealand, and I'm here to work on my own personal brand. I also do a podcast that focuses on elevating Pacific people and also bring attention to our brand, Blue Wave. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.
Is Shy on? I can't Is see. She's on. No, she said she was going to pop in, but I wasn't sure she jumped in or not. Uh, Sh- Shy's on leave today, and she was going to pop in, but uh, we, you'll meet her next week. Shy's my uh, EA, um, and I guess holds the business together because I don't. Um, so that's her job. <laughs> and we'll go on to Connor next. Morning, everyone. At the back here, my name's Connor. Um, I'm a creative director here at the Attention Seeker, helping lead the video team. Huh? Step forward, it can't see me. Oh, there we are. Um, and I'm going to be working on my clothing brand, just trying to get some clarity on where to go next with it. Ness. Hi, everyone. I'm Ness, your community manager here. And also, I am a community manager for, for the Attention Seeker, and I'm working on my brand as uh, a researcher. I want to work, I want to open a consulting business next year and serve agencies and uh, small and medium businesses. Oh, thanks, Ness. Uh, Jennifer isn't here today either. She will be joining next week. Jennifer was in our first cohort. Uh, she owns a company called the We Smokehouse. Um, they smoke like salmon and other, and other sort of small goods like that. Um, and her, her goal with the cohort is to continuously grow that brand, which she's been doing such a great job with already. So she'll be a, a really good resource in this, in this team as well to help other people with her experience. But you'll meet her next week. Um, David. Hi, everyone. <coughs> Kia ora. Um, you might pick up by my accent that I wasn't born and brought up in Aotearoa, but I'm hoping the accent um, kind of mellows out over the next 35 years. So um, I'm looking to uh, increase the personal brand and thought leadership in the entrepreneurial operating system, which I think you guys use and run with, um, in a fractional integrator um, uh, role uh, to engage with uh, any clients who are looking to increase and enhance their business performance. Yeah, it's me. Thank you. David. Thanks, David. Katie. Kia ora I'm Katie, based in Wellington. Um, I run sustainable fashion markets. I'm a music educator and performer, and I also travel the South Pacific as a hobby. And I want to work on my personal brand, which is traveling more and hopefully get paid for it. Um, that's it. <laughs> love it. I love it. That's the dream. All right, Charlotte. Uh, I'm Charlotte. I head up the copywriting department here at Tez. Oh, I'm behind someone. Um, and the daily newsletter as well. Um, and I want to keep evolving my personal brand on LinkedIn. Brooke. Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm Tessa's community coordinator. Um, I've been here about six months post internship. And I'm wanting to build my personal brand on TikTok and LinkedIn. <laughs> Oh, hi, oh, so hey, my name's Holly. Um, I'm a videographer here, um, and I want to work on my personal brand, um, showing off my filmmaking and cinematography. Cheers. Awesome. All right, Daesh, I think you're holding it down for you and your dad. Yeah. Good team. I'm Daesh. Um, I'm just the intern here at the Attention Seeker. Um, no just, no just. No, it is just a just. <laughs> we'll get better though. Yeah. Um, so my dad, Rod, uh, he couldn't make it today, but we're in this cohort together because he runs a fight gym and we're just trying to um, expand our brand and gather attention from everybody and retain that attention. Um, yeah, that's me. Cool. Thank you. Danny. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Danny, and um, yeah, really nice to get to meet everyone. I'm a financial wellness coach and I'm on a mission to grow my personal brand to help people achieve the so-called financial freedom but balanced with wellness and with the lenses of behavioral science to work on the habits that are holding you back uh but yeah very excited to be here thank you oh thank you and Amelia and Jacob hey everyone I'm Amelia and this is Jacob hi and we run the Little Rainbow Co, which is a baby and kids boutique in New Plymouth. And our goal is to um, increase our TikTok, Insta and Facebook. Oh, awesome. That's the cheese. Dusky. Kia ora, guys. I'm Busky. I'm the show writer here at Taz. Been here for two months. Best two months of my life. Um, 
And for my personal brand, I just want to grow my socials and get more opportunities. Thank you. It's Don. Don. So. Hello, my name is Don. Um, I'm the a video editor for the Attention Seeker, and uh, I'm one of, if not the first, remote worker, which is pretty cool. And um, my uh, personal brand, uh, I have a few uh, socials, but it mainly revolves around uh, lifestyle, uh, martial arts, and uh, just art in general. So um, I'm hoping to grow those. Awesome. Maggie. Cool. Hi, um, I'm Maggie. I'm a copywriter here at the Attention Seeker and I started yesterday. So um, I'm just still figuring out, I guess, um, my personal brand and what I want to get out of this, but just looking forward to learning as much as I can and yeah, cruising along. Yep. Thanks. Elaine. Hi everyone, I'm Elaine. Um, that's my team that you see up there. I'm so proud of them. They're all team leaders. I'm the account director as well as the client service director and I handle client intimacy for the company. Um, I'm here because I have a terrible follow, follow account and I really need to learn how to increase it and just to find my next step. So, all right. Um, do you know Clayton, make it on today? They didn't know. Oh, they are. Oh, there they are. You're on the last page. Sorry, Erin. There we go. Can't That's a Maria. Me. Um, my name's Erin. Um, Clayton's making chocolate in the background. Uh, we are Baron Hasselhoff's down in Wellington, and um, we were part of the last cohort, which was amazing. So we're back for more because um, we haven't quite made that ten thousand follower aim that we're we're going for. So just keep at it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. All right, Alison. Hi, I'm Alison. I am a social media manager for a B2B company called HS Pro Service. Um, and I'm here to raise awareness because we only launched four months ago. So, yeah. Nice. And just so everyone knows, Alison's like on the other side of the world from every one of us. Um, and it's nine, well, almost 10 p.m. maybe over there at the moment. So, she's committed. Uh, Kylie. Uh, kia ora tato. My name is Kylie Nipia. I'm the founder of Hawaii Kura. Uh, we deliver cultural wellness and empowerment workshops and cultural training for non Māori organisations. Um, I'm here to work on my personal and business brand, and I was part of the first cohort. Good to be back. Is Carter here today? See? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Kia ora koutou. Um, ko kara toko ingo. Um, I'm Stan's favourite nephew. <laughs> and um, I've been an intern for way too long now. Um, um, my original plan was to um, follow my um, teleo journey with my grandfather, but he's asked if I could help out with his business. So I'm um, just a bit of change of plan, but yeah. It's awesome. All right, Laura. Morning, everyone. I'm Laura. I'm a social media coordinator in the internal brand uh, team. And my plan is to build my personal brand, which I speak about marketing, freelancing, uh, UGC, those type of things. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> awesome. And Sophie? She she's not here. Yeah, she's on there. No, she's not there today. Cool. Sophie is one of our team. She writes for the newsletter in our team as a writer. Um, but yeah, she'll be in when she's in next time. So Tyler. Hi, um, I'm Tyler. I'm a videographer here at Tez. Um, I'm going to be working on kind of merging my freelance art and my personal brand and then working out a strategy from there. Cheers. Awesome. Am I right in saying Roman's not here as well? Is that correct? Yeah. No. Um, Roman is um, from our last cohort as well and is an artist and a, a lecturer as well. And he's working on his own personal brand as an artist and helping. Um, he's got a pretty unique way of seeing the world and teaching and helping to get that message out to everyone else. So you'll get to all meet him uh, next time. Kimberly. Hello. Um, despite being sat here with all of the attention seeker, I don't work for the attention seeker. Um, I work for One New Zealand as head of social media. 
Um, and why am I here? Uh, a little bit like Maddie, um, I am not entirely sure the answer to that question. However, I'm looking at doing a master's in creative writing um, next year. So I expect that I will be trying to grow my personal brand around um, writing, reading and stuff like that. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Hello everyone, my name is Bree. Um, I, uh, I am an entrepreneur, sorry my voice. Um, I do a lot of different things, but mainly in <clears throat> organize any sort of event, um, from small events to huge um, conferences. And, um, and I'm here to grow my personal brand. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. And I think we got a couple other people that I've missed off the list because they're with other people, but Emily, do you want to go next? just throwing you under the bus. Hello, hello everyone. Um, I'm Emily and I work at Phoenix Fitness with Hiram and Abby May and um, I manage the socials. I'm also looking to grow my personal branding with health and fitness and lifestyle. Oh, nice to meet you Emily. Really and then the lucky last I think is Abby May unless there's someone else I'm missing, but Abby May, Milton. Oh, can you see me? No, um, we can hear you nice and loud though. Oh, okay, sweet. Um, I'm Abby May and yeah, I'm from Flex Fitness, Terapa, but yeah, I do the socials and manage the club as well. So I'm here just because, yeah, Hiram told me to jump on, so it'd be interesting. <laughs> Plus I follow the attention seekers, so it'll be interesting to learn some stuff. Awesome, awesome. Okay, have I missed anyone? Has anyone not had a turn? No. Okay, cool. We got through that. Awesome. Okay. So that was really long, um, which is amazing. But um, that's your groups. Oh, there we go. Something going on. Is there something going on? Someone talking? No? no. Um, we've got uh, these groups that you're going to be in throughout this whole period. Now, we're going to do lots of stuff as one big group, and myself, Joni, and Nate are going to teach a lot of things, and we're going to have open discussions as a big wider group. But there is going to be times throughout the next 12 weeks where it doesn't make sense to do that, and you're going to do go into breakout groups, and these are the groups that you're going to do them in. And so the guys with the coloured uh, boxes, they're your leads, as we introduced already, and they're going to be the ones in charge of running that group for you and facilitating them. Um, I'll make sure that before we first do that, I give these guys a brief on what it is because they'll all yell and scream at me otherwise. But I promise you, it's all going to go smoothly because um, there's never any issues with tech when you split people off into groups as there. But we'll see how we go. Um, so that's your groups. Hope that all makes sense. Uh, just, just I want to reiterate for those of you who aren't part of the Attention Seeker team, the reason we've done it this way this time is because we want one our team to all learn the same thing that we're all going through and just you know better our knowledge as a team and what we do but also to give you guys as our second cohort and the guys who are from the first cohort coming back just like the best experience possible you've got every group has got uh, someone from every sort of department in our team pretty much and so if there's any area of your business that you need help with you've got this direct team whose job it is essentially to hold you accountable and make sure that you can do the things that you do so if you're ever looking for like a little private group to get together and try do some work outside of these groups this is potentially those people that you can go with, but also talk to anyone. Like so many of you are potential clients of each other or potential referral partners of each other and things like that. So um, don't be afraid to reach out, connect with everyone as we go along this process. All right. Oh, gone the wrong way. Okay, so the next bit, I'm going to run through this pretty quickly, um, but it's just to give you an overline of the next 12 weeks. Uh, what we're going to do so you have an idea of the agenda for the next uh, for the next three months that we're locked in together. So to start with this week one, um, it's pretty simple. It's obviously introductions, we've done that. Uh, we're going to show you some resources and then Nate's got a pretty big uh, deck to go through. So we're going to give him as much time as possible uh, around positioning. And then you've got it. We've got some homework that's set for you guys to do before we come back for week two. Um, so that's, that's today. Week two and week three, we're going to go into what we call campaign and channel. Um, we are going to split into groups over this next week two and three because these two parts of the process require a lot of brainstorming. Um, and so you've got two of those, uh, two weeks of doing that campaign and channel strategy. Um, as we go to week four, we're going on a bit of a crash course of content creation. Uh, so Joni's going to lead this one and we're going to 
this this one whole week is just like everything we can think of as a crash course of how to make content in all forms and possible uh, like all forms as a way of like just bringing everyone up to speed to the same level of like terminology what we're talking about and all that sort of stuff and then week five and week six we're going to get into story structure which for us is like a fundamental part of making content and without it um, you really can't move forward with any content creation and that will take us up to the halfway point um but what I want to be, uh, what I want everyone to know, especially those who have been in the cohort before, we're going to make and do brand building and content this whole way through. Even though we're not really at the content creation part yet, we are going to be doing things um, throughout this whole process. So for those of you who have been in the cohort before, it's going to run a little differently. You're going to have more homework and stuff set. And we're going to get people creating from day one so that by week 12, we're right into it. So that, that'll be the halfway mark, which is a lot of all the theory sort of done and dusted. Um, and then we're going to go into week seven to 12. We're going to go into the end of it, which is really like what we call prototyping in our business. And essentially what that is, is we go out and make some content, we come back, we critique it, and then we go again. And we keep on doing it until we refine it, until we get the content uh, just where we need it to be. And so that's pretty much the back half of this entire program. And what the way we're going to do that is you are all going to submit your content into the Teams channel, which I'll show. And we're going to... Um, we're going to set some stuff as homework to both watch and make content. And then we're going to talk about it as a group. And we're going to bring up and we're going to go through as much as possible and we're going to refine everyone's. Now, because of how large the group is, um, we'll probably do that. Um, we'll probably only get through, you know, the clients and customers in the group throughout the two hour sessions that we do. And my team, if there's any time left over, we can go through their content unless there's a specific thing we want to teach. Um, if there's any time or pieces of the content that you can't get, feedback for throughout this period there is a teams channel which i'll show you through shortly uh, where you can submit it and, and everyone can watch it and that's what we're doing last time with the last cohort they'll put videos in would watch it and can give them critiques and feedback on it so with the more people in this group more content will go in um, and hopefully more feedback gets into that group as well so the entire 12 weeks we'll be doing this but the last six weeks is where the, the money really happens and it's at that point we need to take everything that we've done and really start to get working so that we get our brands built to where we need them to be. So when you finish this, you don't really need us uh, any longer. Any questions about these 12 weeks that are confusing you? Not necessarily the context of it all, but just like, is there anything that stands out there? Like, well, what is this? Ah, cool. I'm going to take that as a note. Um, okay, next up, resources. Um, so we started to put a few resources together to help you guys throughout this process. So the first one is Publer. Now we'll send this, this deck out to everyone today and there's links in here. If you click on the, uh, we'll send out all the links <clears throat> to sign up if you want for Publer. Publer is a publishing tool, so it allows you to schedule content and it's free version allows you to have three social profiles and up to 10 posts scheduled on it. So you can all click in, sign up, get a free profile, and it allows you to do scheduling for your content. And so the benefit of that is when you're making content, um, you sometimes make content in batches because, you know, creativity strikes and you have all these ideas and you start making a bunch of content uh, or efficiency-wise, but you can't post them that day. So this allows you to stagger it out over time. So um, we'll go through shortly, and I'll show you through all these tools, but the first one's Publer. Second one is Adobe Express, which there's many other ones you can use. It's just one that we have in our team for some of us, those of us who don't use Canva. Um, and then for those of you who don't want to use Adobe Express, there's Canva. But essentially, they're the same product. And all they are is a, um, a graphic design tool to allow you to make graphics quite simply. Um, and they've got predefined like sizes and templates uh, for different stuff. And I recommend that you guys jump. I get one of the two, there's Adobe Express or Canva, and essentially you can get a free membership that allows you to do a lot of the basic stuff that you will need for, for some of the um, easy things that you go through. There's a real simple uh, editing, like graphic design tool that you can use if you need one. Next up is CapCut. So CapCut's both a um, PC application and a phone application. Um, there's so many other and probably better uh, editing software out there, but they all cost. And so for those of you who are new into the video, um, you know, sort of uh, world, I wouldn't go out and buy Adobe 
uh, premiere or anything like that for right now until you've built more of a habit. Cat Cut's free. It's made by TikTok. Um, there's there's other ones out there if you want that are free, but this is the one that we use um, everywhere. The pro version is like $80 a year, so it's pretty cheap as well for any pro people who want to use the pro version. Um, but it is, a, it is a real good tool just for video editing free on your mobile or on your desktop. The next resource that we're starting to put together, which was a big highlight for us out of the last cohort, is starting to put a YouTube playlist together of videos to teach you how to do stuff. So um, the link will be out in the email after this, but it's essentially going to be a playlist that um, we build over time with you guys on all the questions that we get asked. So we'll be able to answer some questions, but then we'll go find a video that's already out there because there's plenty of great YouTubers who have answered these questions and videos. And we'll start to build a playlist of all the questions we get asked. So you'll have access to that playlist and you'll be able to um, refer to it to teach you anything at a later date. And you'll have, obviously have access to it forever. Um, and so any questions or anything that you want to know how to do, like, um, you know, some of the ones that were put in there to begin with, uh, how to use Adobe Express, how to use Pabla, how to use CapCut. But if there's anything that you want to know, if you've got a particular phone that you want to learn how to use the camera app and iPhone, or you want to learn how to use a uh, mirrorless camera, or you want to learn how to learn uh, Hero's Journey or anything like that, there's plenty of resources we can find, which means that we don't have to consume all the um, cohort time to teach that stuff. We can teach you the high level bit, and then you can have a video to watch it afterwards. So YouTube playlists, um, you'll get you all that link. The next bit is Teams. I'm going to show you through that real shortly, um, but essentially all our communication is going to be in Teams to keep it all together, and I'll show you through how that works soon. And then lastly is Otter. <clears throat> so Otter is a transcription tool. Um, you'll see in the guests uh, that we have at the moment, there's one that says Stanley's AI note taker. Um, that's, our, uh, that's Otter. What Otter is doing is it's recording the meeting uh, in the background and it's transcribing everything. And then there's an AI built into it to allow you to ask it questions. So over the course of this 12 weeks, everything that we share and all the questions and answers and knowledge that we pass around will get captured in this. And then you'll be able to go back to it later on and just ask it any question. What was that thing Stan said about CapCut? Oh, cool. You know, you can just ask Otter the question and it'll go and find what I said and summarize it for you in a nice, easy way. So it's like having, you know, we're going to record these, as you can probably see, you've been recorded on Teams already. But who wants to go sit back and watch a two hour video to find that thing out again when you can just go to this odd AI and ask it questions? And as you can see, it already, um, this is from one of our uh, previous cohorts. We all made pledges of what we're going to do for homework and it captured everyone's thing there uh, as, a, as a to do action item. Um, so even with that, you can it can find out all the things we said that we needed to do. So if you're wondering, oh, what was it that Stan or Joni or Nate said I should do? You can go back to the Otter notes and it will tell you straight away. Cool. All right. So before we get into um, the next stage of this, I'm going to sh quickly show you Teams because this isn't the most intuitive piece of software. Um, and I want to just make sure everyone has a good understanding of where it is. Um, let me this one. Okay. So just quickly, um, Teams, this is what it looks like. Yours might be grey if it's on light mode. Um, and <clears throat> you'll have, you can start a new post here and start to write stuff, right? So it's kind of like a chat function. Um, but the way it works is that each one's a post, like, you know, old Facebook feed, and people can comment on it as they go. Um, there's also uh, files here where we'll store any files that we give you, like the PowerPoint from today will be stored there and things like that. Um, and you can, and all, everything we do will go in here. This, this post um, bit at the front here will be where all the communication happens between all of us and where you, you can drop files in there, you can drop videos content styles, everything, and then everyone can jump in and have conversations or or, or, or um, comment or critique on it. So my, my advice is to have Teams on a device that you can access quite easily, either your laptop or phone or whatever works for you if you don't typically use Teams, and just set aside 10, 15 minutes a day to go and check it each day because people will be posting in it and sharing stuff. Vanessa will be in there as well, agitating everyone to get them to do stuff um, and get the community working. So that's there. I'm just going to quickly show you, this is kind of what it ends up looking like. 
there's like all these posts. Um, this is from our last cohort where everyone is like posting in videos. As you can see, they're all loading um, where we can go in and watch people's stuff and critique it as we go along. And this is super powerful because <clears throat> this allows us all to um, learn even when we're not in one of these sessions, right? So if I, I highly recommend getting in amongst this. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. Or Nate, are you got the file on yours or should I share the file for you? Well, you should share it, bro. <clears throat> cool. yep. Yeah, you share, share it. it. You run it because I've got notes on my machine. Cool. Yeah, done. Okay. So next up, I'm going to hand over to Nate and he's going to talk to you through the positioning, which is going to be the homework and I guess the start of this process with us. Next slide. <laughs> Right. If anyone needs to pay, it's probably a really good opportunity just to go real quick and do it because this is you have to going to have to focus on this. The thing we're going to do today isn't solve the problem, but the problem's really hard to solve. So you need to listen and have questions. So yeah, we'll have a two minute break for everyone online as well if you want it. Just because you have to, like, I'm going to explain this to you. This is what I do for my job or what we do here for all of our clients, and we're going to do the same process as is done for like a massive brand and we're going to do it for ourselves and it's not an easy thing to do so you're just going to have to focus and ask the questions you need to ask ask to get to the point because you're going to take this away and do homework on this tonight okay. not make coffee mel 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 <clears throat> Katie, I just saw your question, um, but Vanessa is right. If Katie's there for everyone, Pablo works on all socials as well uh, for everyone. There is a video in the resource library for everyone later on for YouTube how to set Pablo up for the first time. Um, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty easy to do. The only one I think you can't use on the free version is Twitter or X, and that's because X charges a fee for those um, publishers to use it. And so they, they have to on charge the fee. I was but it's a pretty public. Yeah, whether they oh, would post. I was skeptical whether they'd cover all socials because there's always one or two that they don't. But yeah, anyway. look, it's it's been um, it's it's usually not the scheduling software's fault that they can't. It's usually the um, mm -hmm. platform. Like so, Twitter and Threads and stuff were really bad for, for a while, and even TikTok was really bad. Like you couldn't post uh, many things through that, or it would give you a reminder to go into the app and then prove it. And it was just always pointless. Um, mm -hmm. But they've pretty much cleaned it all up, and so now just about all the publishing tools can do it. The only reason we use Publa is, uh, to be honest, I don't know if you guys know what AppSumo is. But I bought our subscription for Publa on AppSumo in 2020 for $200. And that's all I've really paid. Like, we now pay a little bit more because we've grown. Um, but typically, these, like, for an agency our size, this would be a two and a half, three thousand dollars $3,000 a month expense. And I think we spent like 150 bucks or 200 bucks on it. So that's why I use it because I'm a cheap bastard. Uh, yeah. But we run our, it's got a free version. Um, and it, actually, even it's, um, its cost is not that much for a single user. If you want to get the pro version, it's like 20 or 30 bucks a month. It's not much compared to the other thing. Right. <clears throat> and then just before Nate takes back over, Hiram asked, um, do we find any difference between scheduled content and posted direct from platform? And uh, this, <clears throat> no difference at all. Uh, the only, the only differences that you really find is like what you can tag and what you can like, formatting sometimes things like that there's some like logistical stuff but from performance perspective I, i'm thinking you're asking Hiram, no, no no difference from a performance perspective which you can see from our accounts and uh, some of the team's probably personal accounts i use repurpose um 
for my accounts. So it's pulled by a third party app as well. And I don't see. Yes, yeah, we don't see any difference at all. I don't know. I think. I asked the platform of that once, actually. I asked TikTok, like, uh, no, it was YouTube I asked. I said, do you guys penalize for people for using these sorts of things? And he's like, why would we? It just means that you're putting more content, especially places like Instagram and YouTube, where everyone is going on TikTok, and they're like, please post it on us as well. Like, we will, please post it on us. And so they were like, of course, for them, it'd be stupid if they made the performance worse, because then people wouldn't do it. <clears throat> All right, now, I'll mute myself. Am I clear? Am I? Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. So, like I said, we're going to take you through what we would do for any brand and any individual brand. It's the same thing. The idea is to get to a single-minded proposition. It's bigger than that, but ultimately, what we want to do for everyone is get to the thing which we call a single-minded proposition, which is the way you are perceived in the mind of your audience. So you, you want to engineer that because you want people to think a certain thing. So because it's easy to get attention, it's easy to make people know who you are. It's not easy to make the attention sharp enough for you to sell something to someone or, or stand for something. And depends on whether you're a brand or an individual. OK, um, you're not going to know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing on this sometimes. And I do this for my job. You're not going to know what you're doing. And it's fucking scary. And you, you'll, you'll be lost, but that's okay. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. The point of this is that it's a truth. Like it's a thing that's honestly what you are, what you stand for. So that's what you need to get to. Or you can add you can layer onto that, but ultimately at the end of the day, if you are lost and you don't have something that you want to project, then it just becomes a truth about who you are and what you stand for. So don't worry about it. There's going to be loads of questions. Questions today is going to be cool. Outside of this, while you're doing your homework, I'm not going to be capable of asking everybody's question, answering every single person's questions. That's when you go to your team leaders. So you're going to ask your questions to your team leaders. If the team leaders don't have the answer, then they can come to me and ask me the questions. But I'm, listen, I'm not going to be capable of asking because I know you're going to have a lot of questions and you're going to have a lot of stumbles. So I'm not going to be capable of answering all of those questions for everyone. And that's what the groups are for. Go to your group, chat about it. If you can't solve it, then I can help. But obviously, I can't help everyone. All, like, all of this week, I can't be answering all the questions because it's just not that won't work. Okay, so there are a number of things in this deck uh, which we'll go through. And this is a this is a standard deck that we have, a templated deck that we've just created, Connor and I. And this is what we use for all of our client strategies. We just go through this. There are bits and bobs that we add in. We've, sim we've simplified this down a little bit because we don't need all of the stuff. But this is actually the template that we use for our clients. And this is the process we go through, right? So the first thing we're going to establish, we're not going to establish it today. We're going to tell you what it is, and then you're going to go away and try and do it for your homework. And by the next week, we want everyone to have established all of these things. And every single one of you will have a deck that is your strategy deck. You'll all have this. This is the thing that you, the part of this process is you'll all go away with a really clear strategy and a clear single-minded proposition for your brand or your personal brand. Okay, first thing we need to establish is your purpose. So a brand purpose is ultimately just the why. Why are you doing what you're doing? What was the thing that fucked you off so badly that you decided to do something? What was the opportunity that you saw? What thing did you find that was broken that you wanted to fix? Why is it that you get out of bed in the morning? It's effectively the purpose of your brand. And ultimately, if it's not a brand and it's a personal brand, it's the purpose of you. So that can be a mission or that can just be you. Right. It can be like, I want to tackle problems in mental health or it can be, I just want people to think I'm cool. Those that's not a judgmental thing. It's not a test. What you need to do is just try and establish why the fuck you do what you do. And whether that's like the golf brand or I don't know, Busky's thing or, you know, like, why is it you do that? And why is it that what, what is the thing that d drives you every day? Next slide. What I might do, do you want to do questions on each slide or do you want to do questions? Maybe it's better to do questions on each slide. So has anyone got any questions on what their brand purpose, what a brand purpose is? No, nope, all good. Clear? Okay, next slide, please, Stan. Uh, brand vision. 
So this brand vision is the big lofty thing that if you kept doing the thing you're doing, what would it achieve in the future? Like what is the big problem that you'd love to solve? And this is almost like a big hairy audacious goal. Like what's the thing that you want to see? What's the change that you want to be in the world in 10 years? And again, it can be lofty or it could be just a regular, like I want to be famous or it could be, I want to solve mental health problems or I want to like our one is um, our purpose is 10 billion. I mean, our vision is 10 billion followers. Right. So that's the, the big thing that you think or not all it kind of needs to feel achievable, but, but maybe big enough to, for you to like to keep chasing. What is the thing that you will achieve if you continue to operate in the way that you do and you get up every morning and do this thing? What over in, te in 10 years time, what is that thing that you want to achieve? What do you want to what do you want to have stat stood for for those 10 years? Questions? Next slide, please. And then the mission. So this is the thing that you're doing today and you will continue to do. So this is almost like the little itty bitty stuff that you do every day. This is your post. Like what's the post you're making that answers the why and is getting putting you on the trajectory to get to your vision? What's your daily stuff? So this is almost like what you do. Like what do I what do you do every day to do this? Carl's post about pies, right? That's like the thing that the, the actual nitty gritty of your job. To, to So for me, if it was the mental health thing, it would be like I'm posting every day about this problem because I want over time for people to change their opinions because I'm passionate about it, which is my why. And over the 10 years time, opinions are going to change so much that there's going to be a difference in the world. Are that clear? They're the three big difficult things. I think they're the most difficult things to get to. Other than the single-minded proposition, which is a three or four-word thing that sums all this up, these are the hardest things for you, possibly the hardest things to actually work out yourself. Because ultimately, like, it's not, it's just, a, it's in a, how would I put it? It's it's engineered. It's not really, it's an engineered thing that you want people to understand about you. And sometimes people are really, that's really obvious, and sometimes it's really not obvious. And that's where it gets tricky for some people. Next up, please. Okay. So these are the values. There's usually probably five of these, four or five of these. And these are the things that you stand for. Like, other than your why that gets you out of bed, what are the other drivers? Um, almost like a, I don't know, like you might be that part of the reason I want to do what I want to do is because I'm empathetic. Part of the reason I want to do what I want to do is because I'm creative. Part of the reason I want to do what I want to do is because I'm driven. So these are the values of the of a brand or a person that underpin the three things above. Like these are the kind of the behaviors, really. What are the what are the things about your personality? If you're doing a personal brand, what are the things about your personality that drives you to the why, which drives you to go further, do the thing you do to get to the vision? The trait they're just personality traits, effectively and beliefs that, that support you in your mission to achieve the things that you're trying to achieve with your brand. Oh, I'm worried you don't have any questions. Yeah. I'm sure we don't have any questions, guys, because go. Yeah, go this is. Time you get, this. Yeah, we've got more time. And at the end of this, we're going to well, at the end of the session, we're going to send you off. and We want you to comp have completed this by the end of the week. By the time you come back next week, you're going to have to have filled this out. Oh, sorry. Here, go, go, go. Danny? Oh, yeah. So I have a quick question. Uh, obviously, when you're starting a business, which is, or your personal brand, um, it's easy for you to get influenced by external um, factors. And then all those factors, they keep changing. It's like they keep evolving. Um, so how can you really get to the root of those four different, you know, points and not get distracted or keep changing your mind uh, about all of the the four there because I find like the other day I said I want to do this and then maybe even like oh should I just niche for this kind of avatar or this or that um it's almost like it's always evolving do you have any tips for that 
I think you've got to you've got to set some like you need to have set in stone the the basic principles of your brand because it, because over time people need to understand what those principles are so they're the real base things and if you change them all the time people have no idea what your brand actually stands for and if people don't know what a brand stands for it's much harder for them attach them, to attach themselves to it or to have a relationship with it or to you know want to purchase it so you have to like take all the external stuff away what's why are you doing it what's your vision what's your what the, what are the things you do every day to achieve that and then what are the values that drive you does that make sense you've got to strip away the external stuff it's actually what you are what you it's like if you met a if you have a friend right you like your friend because they have these basic qualities that you admire or you love or whatever if that friend just changed the way they acted all the time and started to like believe in different things and become like really in, you know like didn't wasn't weren't consistent in their personality then it'd be much harder to like that friend or have a relationship with that friend because you wouldn't understand what that friend does every day you'd be like why are you grumpy today like why are you really angry and why have you suddenly gone like, like why are you now supporting conservatives when or the national party when yesterday you supported labor like it's confusing me i don't want to hang out with you anymore and that's the analogy i'd use to go like you actually got to establish who, what person you are before you can go out there and meet friends and have consistency and relationships with them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now that's awesome. Thank you so much. Stan. Um, I was just going to add a little thing that I do, Danny, and uh, uh, to help me like stay focused because I'm like a crazy inventor founder, right? So my mind changes every second of the day. Um, but when I'm trying to think of like these things, like values or uh, my mission or whatever. I will, I run the extreme cases of everything. So I'll take them to the extreme and see, do they stand up still on that? So like, as an example, with brand values, we, to a couple of years ago, when we first sort of solidified them as a team, um, everyone was like fun. We want fun as a brand value. It makes sense. Like we like to have fun. And I was like, okay, well, let's just run it out in some scenarios. Um, what happens when we're all having a bad day because work so you know, full on, we've got lots to do. And like, it's just one of those days you've got to grind and we know how long to have fun. Have we all failed at our brand values and can't be the team that we said we wanted to be because we can't stand up to this value that we've held up on this pedestal saying fun. And like, we all were just like, well, no, like you can't just have fun all the time. That's not right. It's not something that can always exist. Therefore, it's just a, a nice to have. So then we discarded it. And so we, we at the moment, our values are uh, as a company anyway um is what we call growth challenge and that is for don't be a dick grow or die challenge the status quo and those three things like when we run them out to the extreme they, they always work like we always do think it's best to grow all the time that if you aren't growing you are dying and we think that that stands up to the test of time and and, and all these tests of running it out to the extreme like if we're always growing all the time is that a bad thing well, no, it's not like it's, it's it's always going to be a good thing for us to do that. So I sometimes when I like and then when I'm doing this, that's how I like to think about it. That way I'm not getting such flippant answers that tomorrow can just change because I watched a new Gary Vee video and he tells me something else. And I think, oh, shit, I should do this now. And, you know, it's just like I'm, I'm not thinking of it deep enough. So for me personally, as someone who like mine gets changed all the time, uh, that's that's my litmus test to be like at, the, at its extreme point, does it still stay uh, stack up? No, that's gold. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, these are actually like these are hard to explain. Like they are hard to explain because they're really hard to separate because there's a lot of them and they all they all kind of overlap. So yeah, so do they, I should, will expect questions. It's all good. You know, you can't be wrong, and it's not a test. It really isn't like. People, we got to understand this because we're going to go away and try and do this ourselves and come back next week with the answers. Um, the three slides before the brand values, it was the brand mission and vision and vision purpose. purpose. You said it's it could be quite possibly like hard to nail down. So how, how does one go about that? Like nailing it down. So nailing down your mission values, it's a, you have to go look in yourself and go for a personal brand. You have to look in yourself and go, what is the thing that I want to be known for? And what's the, so if I'm going to be known as a rapper, what's the goal there? Like, what would be the goal? So the goal would be in 10 years for you to be, I don't know, J. Cole, as big as J. Cole, right? And then, so what is the thing that you do every day to get you to be as big as J. Cole? 
And why is it that you want to be J. Cole? What's important? Why is that important to you? Why would people believe that you're going to be, like, why would people believe in you? Do you just break it down into actual just truths about yourself in that position? Whereas the brand is different because the brand's like, the brand might want to be the biggest shoe company in the world. How are they going to do that? Well, they have to make the best shoes and why people believe they're the best shoe company because people, everyone's wearing them. Whatever. Is that clear? Yeah. So you have to really look at, like, it's just, if you don't know what it is, then just look into yourself as the truth. And take, like Stan said, take it to the extreme. Like, what is it actually the big, hairy thing that you want to achieve? Cool. Okay. So then there's brand, brand personality. So these are, this is very close to values, obviously. So for us, the values are don't be a dick, grow or die. Um, challenge the status quo. Thank you. It's because I'm on the spot. Um, the tone of voice is how we express that. So that in, in, in Taz world, I'm sure you're all familiar with our TikTok. We express that through the skits and the things that we do that project to people that we are not dicks, that we do crazy shit, and that we're always trying we're trying new, new stuff and we're challenging what's out there. And that's, so that's the way that it comes across as in the tone of voice. So it will be in a brand sense. It's like how when you write a paragraph, what are the, what, what are the style of words that you use to come across as kind, to come across as angry, to come across as empathetic. So all brands have this, and all per, all of our personal brands have this too. So we derive this from the, the discoveries we do, where we talk to our clients and we work out what kind of person they are and what they want to be known as, as for. Because some people don't want to be known as real angry, but they might be angry. So we have to then change the language that they use into words and phrases that become that make them seem to be kind. And again, there's usually probably four or five human characteristics that you might derive to get to a point where you like, and that's just your personality. It's basically, it's your personality or the personality you want your brand to be known for. So every like Nike has a, they, they always call it the, the it's like the human traits. So Nike will have five human traits. All brands have the five human traits. That they're just the way they speak and the way they behave. So when all the communication comes out over all the years there are really familiar pillars that people can understand, be clear about, and therefore buy into the brand. Cool. Questions? You look confused. We have a question in the chat here. Um, yep. So someone is saying authenticity, what feels true to yourself versus efficiency, what moves things forward for your purpose, what do you do there? Okay, so that's um, the. So it's efficiency versus authenticity. Authenticity versus authenticity. So I think that's the scale based on your whether your um, desire is to just get yourself out there or is to sell something. I think because just to get yourself out there and to be known, you can be really authentic. On the flip side, if you're trying to sell something, you might have to inject some untruths to make the thing that you're trying to sell more attractive, right? Which is what advertising is effectively. And they're not saying they're untruths, but they're exaggerations of things that exist. So I think that's the balance. If you're doing a personal brand, then you can just be yourself. Honestly, like you don't want to tell everyone that you're a nutbag and you want to kill people because that's probably not the right thing to do. You want to probably delete that part. But you do, but you do want to try and be as honest as you can because that's what will come across. And and then you go, actually, do I want to like what is the thing I want to be known for? What's the what's the point I'm gonna? When people have the conversation with me or see me or what when they leave, what are they gonna think? What are they gonna do? Yep. Did that answer the question? Yeah. Pri, do you want to ask your question? Yes. Nate, can you can you please give some samples on brand personality? Some sorry? Samples. Examples. Examples. Uh, brand personality will be um Stan, you want what? I, I said I could do our brand if you like. Yeah. Yep, you, that would be awesome. Do. Yeah, so on our brand, um when you think of Taz, the attention seeker brand, not not mine, but attention seekers, we have um things like cheeky. Like being cheeky is a real big part of our brand as a team. Like it's where the guys like take the piss out of me or take the piss out of different things. They're, they're, they're really cheeky with it. Um, we have a, a rule around like not being a dick. So our tone of voice is that we don't to each other, especially like so if we don't 
make fun that's hurtful to people inside the team on a video unless they're there to defend themselves. So that's like part of our tone of voice. Like the guys can do it with me because I'm the owner and I don't mind, but like they can't do it to each other. They can't make fun of each other in a video if they're not there in the video to defend them themselves because we're not that sort of team. We actually, the guys do all get along. Um, and uh, what else do we have? Um, I've gone blank now that I said all that. Um, Cheeky's a bit. Cheeky's our main one, eh? But, and then in my one, like as uh, Stan um, on my LinkedIn and stuff like that, I have like quite a considered tone of voice. So I, and, and, and what I mean by that is not like conservative or anything, not by any stretch of imagination, but it's like, it's quite considered in like the advice that I give that I, it's all comes from somewhere from experience. It all comes with the learning along with it as well. So I try to talk from my, own personal experiences so I can teach others stuff. So there's an educational tone um, to, to what I say. I've also got like a bit of a who gives a fuck tone as well. And you'll see that in a lot of my content, which I'll swear or I'll say stuff on LinkedIn that most people won't. But I'll also talk about things like I'm like, uh, like transparent, like a lot of my tone and, and, and personality is transparency. So I'll often share more than most people will or think about sharing. So those are sort of some examples of like how ours are different. Like my 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 personal brand is a little bit slightly different to our um, attention seeker brand, where I'm not really cheeky in mine. I'm a little bit more straightforward and to the point and blunt um, in the way that I speak on that. But then on the attention seekers one, it's a bit cheeky and fun and sort of, sort of humorous. But it still gets the same sort of message across if you really think about it. If you really look at what we're talking about, I think a good way to look at it is the reverse. So, for instance, if our one of our values is don't be a dick and we talk in an obnoxious way, then people aren't going to believe that we that we we have that value. And you want people to understand that, that, that you have those values. It's the same thing like I talked about with a, with a friend. The friend has values which you like and you stick to, and that's why you're friends with them. So if they start being really obnoxious in the language that they've used, which is against what they've been doing or against what they want you to think, then you're not going to love them as much. And it's that that's a really like if you look at it at the reverse, it's a good way to look at it. If you say that you if you one of your values is we're empathetic and then you use language which clearly isn't empathetic, that's confusing for people and therefore not going to give you the desired result. Yeah. Sam. <clears throat> um, this is kind of for like Mel and Stanley, but I'd love for you guys to talk to like when it comes to the extreme and like you're dealing with like hate comments or responding to people that you know trying to fight in your comments and kind of like how you deal with that because i think that's probably valuable for people starting out on their social media journey because they will get negative comments eventually yeah it's a good one for now um the way that i look at hate comments might be a little bit different to most um i kind of look at it as like a data point so at the end of the day like it's a way for you to understand what matters to your audience. So like, I think there's a saying that like the least profitable outcome in marketing is indifference. So if you're striking a chord, that tells you something. So either you double down on it to get, the, to get what you want, or you figure out what's the opposite end of it. What do you need to do to kind of, yeah, really like, understand your audience and like tap into what they really care about so yeah i'd say that it's a data point yeah. Oh. Yeah. so kind of leading on from that at what point do you change your personality voice or tone or do you never um so to kind of expand on that a little bit um sometimes in my tiktok feed i will get videos of um particularly women who are like I've created this piece of content and it's brought the people that I actually want to my channel because previously they just had kind of, sorry, stereotyping, lecherous men in their, in their words, um, who were coming to their channel for not the reasons they want people to come to their channel. So I am expecting that you're going to say, just keep being consistent, keep doing it. It'll work. Your audience will come to you, but not everybody not everybody is going to be as good as everyone else on this cohort. They're not going to, they're just not going to be, that's how the world works. So if they're attracting the wrong people or the personality voice and tone isn't working, do you change it? Can you change it? Um, <clears throat> yeah. 
Do you want to go? Yeah, I can jump in if you want. Um, you can jump in after me. Um, I that's a real good question, Gimli, and something that comes up often with our sales and clients, as you probably know. Um, but from my perspective, is if you are one hundred percent certain that the personality, voice, tone, values, and everything are aligned to the audience that you're trying to talk to, and you've got the audience right, then there is an element of like uh, making sh- like consistency and stick with it, hold the joke until you find it. There is a part of that that plays out, and we've seen that to be successful in the past. But often, one of two things has gone wrong, uh, usually in this case, uh, which is the first test to check, is either you haven't understood your audience right, and therefore you've you've harnessed the voice and personality of yourself that you want to display to the world the wrong way because you've thought about the audience not quite right so because we have lots of tones of voice lots of personalities like you know Joni talks about this a lot that the person that people see of her online is like 10 percent of who she really is 90 percent of her no one ever gets to see that part of her right so she gets to choose right that part of who she shows so she's obviously on her personal brand found the right part of her personality that her audience is likes because she attracts the right people. So m- maybe what happened in that case is that you've got the wrong part of it across the line. Um, and then the second part, the second way that it usually breaks down is that you make a piece of content, whether it's written or video or photos or whatever, and you feel like you've done it in a tone of voice. But actually, when you go and scrutinize and you look back at it, you can t- you can see that actually the tone of voice isn't quite right. There might be a little bit of snarkiness in it. There might be like a few choice of language that wasn't quite right because we didn't really think about it at the time. But out of context, it's now wrong. And that's usually the two ways that I see it going wrong. And if, th- if those two aren't there and you're adamant about it, then I would hold the course. But it is a hard thing to do and you need to have some support to help you a lot of the time. What well, he said. Um... I just had a, I just had that one that thing when you know when you think something and you go that's the answer and then you forget it it was really annoying. I think the reality is that if you change any of those things, then your audience gets confused. So you can change them, but your audience is going to get confused. If you need your audience to get confused to then pivot to another direction, it's okay to change them. Does that make sense? I think it's important that um, you need to understand that no one will ever know the entirety of who you are like you are such a complex human and a complex brand and everything that if you want like I have a thing for humor and dark humor and whatever that is but I don't show that on my personal page because that would be very very um conflicting with the like self-confidence message that I'm trying to push but that's okay. Like people can learn about my humor in other ways, whatever, when they come meet me. But if I'm going to go back to my brand purpose and message and like vision and all of that, it's about self-confidence. So therefore, that is the message I'm going to continue to push. And I understand that not everyone's going to know the complexity of who I am as a human. So once you let go of the fact that your audience will never know you ever, like they won't know you ever, not as well as any of your friends and family will, like that's where you'll really strive because then you have a clear message, clear tone of voice, clear personality, X, Y, Z. And also, I think we're talking about like... Also like on the literous men question, like they're just a reality of the internet. Like they're gonna exist in any content you make. You could be, wearing a turtleneck and oven mitts and a boiler suit and they probably still exist so like same yeah same with trolls so like your audience may still exist they just might not be commenting as much and you may not see them as much you also uh, need to um, to kind of grasp that the behavior that people show on each platform sometimes can be different we all know that TikTok, it's more like laid back Gen Z. And we all know that Instagram, you're going to have more of the millennials. So you all know that they're going to uh, behave in a different way and talk in a different way. That doesn't mean that you have to change the way you talk, but just the expectations there with the, the how people, the audience is going to talk to you. Yeah. That's a real good point, Ness, and saying that I you'll see on my content, my TikTok, Instagram content, versus my LinkedIn content that I'm, I'm talking about the same stuff essentially, but I, I address them very differently because one's in video obviously and one's in text. Um, but like, I know that the audience is younger on both 
uh, TikTok and Instagram, and that uh, they, I don't know I put this the right way, but like they, they probably will take offense more than what my LinkedIn audience will. My LinkedIn audience has got a few more battle scars, maybe in a little bit thicker skin. And so I can like have a little bit more of a deeper, robust conversation with them. Whereas on TikTok and LinkedIn, I have to subdue that a little bit because like my normal way of speaking, as Laura likes to put it, is savage. And so I have to make sure that I don't like get that across too much. Whereas on my LinkedIn, like my LinkedIn audience can handle it. They're all big and ugly enough to take it. I think as well, um, negativity is something that you can just absolutely guarantee on social media, I think. Certainly speaking from my own experience, uh, I try and stay quite positive in my videos and a lot of people then post and sort of say, oh, he's too positive, he's too positive. So if I ever say something negative, they go, oh, no, he's being too negative, too negative. So you can just guarantee conflict no matter what you do. And also I think as well, it's, it's kind of important to remember that criticism isn't always valid. Um, to use an extreme example, I, if I went up to the CEO of Apple and tried to tell him something about laptops, then uh, he would laugh in my face. So, you know, why on earth should we trust Joe Bloggs in the street to tell us about our own brand and what we're doing wrong? So I guess that's a quite a roundabout way of saying that even though obviously criticism can be valid, a lot of the time it just isn't. And that's only learned through having 18 months of <laughs> quite significant amounts of it. So, yeah, I guess essentially don't listen to all the negativity is the overarching message. Um, I also think that you have to be where you are comfortable. Like, you know, not everyone is deaf. Like, we we are everywhere. Um, so if you feel more comfortable being on LinkedIn and, and Instagram, there's nothing wrong with that. If it's all right for you to find your audience there, uh, you know, you don't need to be everywhere. Any other questions? No. Okay, uh, this is this is incredibly difficult for people because everyone assumes that everyone is their audience. <clears throat> Most people go, oh, it's just everyone. Everyone between 15 and 50 is the audience. Okay, so what, based on what you're selling, which might be you or might be a product, um, what, your, what the things you've just established are like your purpose and your vision and what it is, um, it's really important to get a really clear idea of who you're selling to. And I think personally it's the... The more niche you get, the more successful you will be over time. You can go broad early, and you're gonna. It's gonna be harder. You go niche early, and then grow from there. You're gonna get much more success. So you've got to work out who it is you're talking to, and like, why are you talking to them? What's the point of talking to them? What 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 are they gonna do? Like, are they gonna follow you? Are they gonna buy your shit? Um, it's a. It's actually. It is actually a really difficult thing to do, and um but something that you really need to have an idea of who it is you're targeting because it will affect the way that you speak to people. It will, like we just had, a, you know, the chat we've just had. Like if you're, if you're targeting trolls, then you're laughing because that's real clear niche way. You can go there easy. If you're, char if you're, if you're targeting 18-year-olds, that's much harder because they're all different, right? And we've had a lot of conversations around here as well about how you actually segment that. Do you just go, my target audience is 18-year-olds or do you go, my target audience is 18-year-olds that look like Taylor Swift and wear green trousers like the more you can get the more you can drill it down the more success you will have initially and therefore the more you will like your more success you'll have over time you have to be really try and be really precise and not just you know because just no one cares there's loads of people out there no one cares but a small group of people will care and they're the ones you want to get first because that will be the way you get to grow maddie um just a question is there uh, i guess categories where you'd want us to like niche down on so like and saying like location age or is it kind of i guess it would be tailored to every different brand yeah be tailored yeah and don't and like again it's this isn't a test this isn't like a thing you can get right or wrong like strategies are not really right ever right or wrong they're kind of subjective but they're just true to the thing you're trying to sell you just got to make it true to the thing you're trying to do like it's not that there's a test and you'll get it wrong so your audience really just has to be like who do i want to talk to and that comes from like your why, like the thing I'm my, well, the reason I get up in the morning is because of X, who else is going to be interested in that? Because loads of people don't give a fuck, but there will be some people interested in that. I want to talk to those people. I need to identify who those people are and I need to go find them and talk to them because that's the way I'm going to grow my brand. Um, 
Would you recommend having only one target audience or can you target two groups of people at once? For example, like with marketing and social media content, I often attract like other marketers and freelancers, but I also want to attract small business owners that will be a lead, turn into a lead. I think, yes, you can, but I think what you basically you're attracting someone who wants a certain thing. So whether, well, and that, that doesn't like, this is the same thing as, the trolls there's going to be trolls that are 18 50 72 like they're all trolls but they're actually all the the intrinsic commonality that they have is the thing that you're speaking to so you're speaking to people who need to improve their skills or want to understand how to do it like so that uh, that that's the thing that you can find that's your audience does that make sense it's not necessarily the what who that what they look like or where they live or how old they are it's actually what's the thing that you offer them that they want is the actual audience and if you can identify that thing, then you, you don't really have to worry about what creed they are or, you know, any of that shit. It's just they want this thing. I'm talking to people who want to learn how to be better at social media. That's my audience. Go, Stan, or? Oh, we got Danny first. Go, Danny. Danny. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So I just have, like, in, in regards to, you know, targeting the audience, um, let's say that if I wanted to do financial wellness for women, but I don't want to necessarily exclude men from being part of their community. Do I still like, do we make it explicit that, that who the target audience is or the way we behave and the way like our tone of voice will be enough to do that? Yeah. You identify, I mean, what you're offering is financial help and then it would be the way that you wrap that up, which will, de de will determine your audience. So if your language is very feminine, then you you know, and your color schemes or whatever are, are targeted that way, then you're much more likely to attract that audience. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you're still offering the same thing. Cool. And how, however, like how you drill down on your tone of voice and all of that is going to determine how focused you are on the certain audiences within the within the group of people that want financial help. Beautiful. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Cool. Um, for me, when I think about this, uh, when I think of target audience, as a business owner at least, and so for some of you, uh, for those of you in business and, 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 and building your brand for whatever it is for business, the way I look at it is who's like the primary um, like customer from a real broad level. I always start real broad. So when I started the business, for me, it was small business owners. So, and that's a really broad category because small business owners in New Zealand is like I don't know it's like there's a lot of everyone them. yeah there's everyone you know 16% of the population has a small business or something in this country there's shit tons of us um so that's so broad but what does that mean like how do you focus on that how do you find them so I had to then first go okay well what sort of um small businesses did I want to talk to at first and so then I sort of broke it down like so industry wise I was like well actually I kind of want to talk to professional services. That's kind of where I want to start, you know, IT, legal, uh, finance, stuff like that. So I went and like labeled a few different industries. And then I was like, okay, well, the ones that I actually wanted, once I narrowed it down to the ones I actually finished on, which are like professional consultants and co um, coaches and things like that, I realized I had to find out, okay, where are these people? Okay, these people are mostly, well, sorry where are these people in their professional capacity as who they are? And actually in that cohort, they were all in uh, LinkedIn, you know, they weren't on Instagram that much. So if they were, they were on Instagram as a parent or as a sister or as a brother, but in on LinkedIn, they were there as a business coach. That's what they were doing on that platform. So now I, now I'd narrow it down a little bit further and then I had to go, okay, well, I can't just work for the whole world because that's crazy. So, and I can't work for all of New Zealand at the beginning. So I narrowed it down a little further and I went, okay, well, I'm only going to look at Auckland. Okay. So now I've got a little bit deeper. And then I was still like, I don't know, it was like 10,000 people or something that was this target audience, which for me was still really huge. So I had to then think about, okay, how can I break it down even further? And so I ended up eliminating more um, industries. I then started to go for people who were less than 10 employees because you could filter like that on LinkedIn. So I went for business owners in uh, like three or four industries that had less than 10 employees because at the beginning, I didn't feel like I could go after these 50, 100 thousands of employee businesses, but I could work with these like one to 10 employee businesses. So I kept drilling it down. 
And then I was like, okay, there's a few hundred. Okay, what type of people do I actually want to work with? Like, I got out of hospitality because I wanted to, as we called it in hospitality, customers. I wanted to stop working with customers. And so I ended up going, well, actually, I want to work with people who are like me. So I need to find people who like to have a joke or like to have humor, who probably swear way too much, um, who are okay going to work in a t-shirt, you know, things like this. So I started finding out, like, I started building a personality type and like, what, what, so what type of content are these guys watching? Or what type of content do I watch actually was probably the bigger thing. So then I just started scrolling on LinkedIn a bit and I started looking at like the types of content and what I was sort of consuming. And I sort of, and then I started to look at the comments and the likes and things. I started to build these personas of people that were like, I had like four or five. I was like, these are the guys, like, these are the people that I want to go after. So I'm going to create content that now speaks to them. And so I got my target audience down to like a few hundred, which was really good for me at the beginning, because when I started to acquire clients, um, I'd already been talking to them for months before COVID hit and I got my first sort of clients over that lockdown period. So that's kind of like my process and all of you will be different, but you start real broad and then just like keep drilling it down. And then there's this really interesting, I don't know if Mel uh, wants to jump in and share some stuff here, but the interest conversation is like a phenomenal conversation that we need to have a lot more. As a team, we're only just starting to have that conversation a lot more. And it's, so you go and target audience on these demographics and where they are and what whatever. But that bit I was to saying about what do they watch, what are the content they're consuming, that's telling you about the interests they have. So what are the interests of these people? So let's say you were talking to like new mothers, right, for Amelia who want to come in and buy the stuff from your store. What are the interests of new moms, right? You know, what are the things? And it's not just going to be baby stuff. There's going to be a whole lot of other stuff that, New mums are interested in, right? There might be a whole thing on health because, you know, they've just had a baby. So there might be a whole health thing that they're going through as well. Or there might be other stuff that they're doing, right? There's lots of stuff that changes for women at that point in time in their life. So it's not just all like toys and baby gear and whatever. So what are those interests? And then what's the intersection between your brand's like product and service? So how does the stuff that you sell intersect some of those other interests that they have? Like, for instance, this is a stupid example. So I'm not obviously not a mother, um, but let's say it's like a, a pram that can be used for going for jogs, right? So they're interested in health and they're interested in these, and you've got these prams that are really good for taking someone for a, for a jog as you're trying to get your exercise regime back in. There's like an intersection there, right, on interests. Uh, again, terrible example, but you guys get the picture. I think a good, in, like, good um, comparison is like when you put two people who look slightly different in the same room for example Stan and I right but actually we have a shared interest in the artist J. Cole and music right and so if you play into that we would probably both consume the same content but we look completely different but we are still the end um, consumer of the album or the music does that make sense so you can't look into just like what this person looks like and kind of roughly their day-to-day -day. actually we look very different but we're about to buy the same product so that intersection of interest is really important. Hiram, you got your hand up. Yeah, Hiram got two hands up. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> you kind of answered the question already, but I think it was around like brand personality and voice and tone versus target audience, which is inside a company where if the company's trying to, I guess, put forward a brand voice, but you've got two, say, staff members that naturally have, can sort of make a style of content that's a lot better than the other. So like education versus entertainment, as an example, do you try and play to that strength of you can have different personas inside the brand where one person naturally makes really good education content that can speak to like that portion of your target audience and the other person can speak to that target audience and they have that crossover where they're more entertainment or does that get confusing? Stan, do you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, we're probably the best example of this uh when you watch our content right like my content versus what Joni does on our tears versus what we do on the attention seekers um static content on linkedin uh versus you know what we do on the dating void for new if you watch that um or our podcasts like stan explaining or our newsletter um as it is and all of our personal brands we all have this these different 
like um, niches. And so, what what where we are as a business, and where some businesses in this in this cohort are, is that you will have more than one demographic. Like you will have more people. Uh, you won't just have one type of person. You'll need lots of different. Like Hiram at Flex, you, you're you're the type of people that you're going after are so wide and varied, actually. And so you will need to have different streams for all of them if you really want to target them. So my advice is first start with one. Get one mastered. In our business, it was LinkedIn. And for my personal brand, we went really like, oh, we, by we, it was me and my mate's spare bedroom, went really heavy on my personal brand on LinkedIn. And as we grew, we added the other channels later on and we went after different audiences. And so now we have much, uh, like a much larger scope, but there isn't like, it would be stupid, I think, to start there. I think you would be really confusing if you went out at the beginning and did 10 very different like profiles. My advice is try keep it to two at the beginning. If you've already got a couple, you can add a third or a fourth if it makes sense. But for most people in this cohort, it's going to be maximum two, I'd say. Yes. Yes. Uh, we have a question on Tinks. Um, is it still a good practice to create avatars for target audience or best to keep it simple? Absolutely. That that is that is essentially what you're doing here is creating an avatar. Like like I said with mine, right? I, I narrowed it down until I got a few different industries, what they did, what sort of content they liked, and I built and I built it. And and I really did have two. I really did have um uh two different sort of avatars in the beginning. I can't remember what they were now, it's a few years ago now, but absolutely build an avatar. And so for everyone who doesn't know what that is, it's just essentially like you're just putting you're just personifying this target audience that you've got. So like, you know. A uh, 42 year old female who's a CEO of an exercise company with this many employees who's interested in this sort of stuff, you know, and you give her a name. So it's it's Laura. This is her name. This is what she does, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And so you like actually like build out the character is what the avatar is. They are really good. And the reason they're good is when you go to make content and stuff, you can sit there and go to yourself, will like, will Laura watch this? Like, I'm not sure. You know, will she do it? No, I don't think she will. I think she'll think this is shit. So, okay, scrap it. Or what do I need to change about this that will land on that? Does she really care about this thing? Because actually her interests are here and where's it intersecting? I can't find it. So it gives you like a litmus test to check whether or not the audience is right. So yeah, absolutely. If you can do it, um, we might, I might put a, find a resource on YouTube for what, how to build an avatar because there's plenty out there and I'll put it in the YouTube resources for everyone. It's a good, it's a good practice to do. Yeah, sometimes it gets a little bit like, um, like we get so ingrained in our content and who we go after um, that we don't need them anymore because we know so well what our content is and who we're talking to. But sometimes when you're lost and you're not sure, it is a good tool to use to just check whether or not you're on track still. Cool. This, um, All right. this might be a homework question, um, but so you know, you said that we were gonna, we were all gonna have our versions of this deck where we would have to go away and write what our brand values are and everything. When we come back, are our groups or as a big group gonna challenge the the values and the mission that you've written to check that it aligns with your target audience and your a tone of voice so would the group be going i don't think that that's the right tone of voice for your brand or value uh, brand value mission does that make sense yeah, are you going to have any anyone challenging you on your yeah yeah absolutely yeah. yeah so that's the diligence that we do so because if you did it on your own then you wouldn't know well you would you would kind of know but you wouldn't be sure so that's why we have the group so you can we can challenge and go are you sure are you sure are you sure because it like you could do it. You can not bother to do this. Like it'd be easy for you to go away from today and go, oh, that's a bit hard. I can't be bothered. I'm not going to do it properly. I'm just going to not do it properly. I can't be bothered. But ultimately that would just cost you in the long run. Because the point is, if you do this really well, you've got the building blocks to do, to have a really substantially substantial campaign. So it's kind of your call, right? If you want to just go away and just do it, I can't be bothered. Then it's not, you're not going to get the result that you need or you want. Maybe you don't want the result. Maybe you can't, you don't want to, but that's what I mean. Like, the diligence has to be done at the start to, to have the building box and the structure to move forward and do it correctly. 
that if you don't do this properly, like we know, like as a as a company, we know this. We have to do the right thing for our clients. And we do as best we can to make the strategy as strong as we can. And we test it. We do this internally. We test our strategies amongst each other just to go, is this the best it can fucking be? Because this is the thing that's going to inform everything that goes forward. And if we get this wrong, then we're going to go off track and we're not going to deliver. So that's the, the, the just the due diligence that you need to do yourselves. A, for yourself, go, is this right? Am I, have, I done, have I done myself proud here? And then B, what do you think? I'm not scared to show my co the cohort. I'm not frightened to get it wrong. I just want to make it the best it can be for me to then progress. So yeah, totally test it and test it with everyone. Test it with your mum. Test it with your mum. Uh, there's a few more slides on the deck which we're not going to fill in. So we're going to yeah. stop at campaign, for, but I'll just take you through just to explain what they are. The homework stops at campaign. You don't have to fill this bit in. The people that work here will understand this part. Um, the campaign is once we've established all of those things, like our purpose and our audience and what we're saying, what we're selling, the campaign is the bit where we um, express that to our audience. So that's whatever the, you know, it might be a TV commercial, it might be a TikTok, it might be, I don't know, a poster, whatever, the, that, that, that's the, the next phase. You don't have to worry about that at this point. Just put it out of your mind because we're not going to we're not going to be able to answer that until we've established the stuff we just talked about. It's just in the deck because eventually we'll fill it out and you'll have it all tidy and then on from that is channel strategy again so until we've worked out our positioning and then what our campaign is we can't really work out where the executions are going to go so the channel strategy is literally where do we put the, th the stuff we're going to make like is it on the back of a bus is it just on linkedin you know we'll decide all of that based on what the proposition is what the idea is and then like where's how's best to get to our audience where are our audience basically and then the roadmap is to, to then develop how do we push forward? Like, what do we do next? Where are we going to go? What happens if everyone hates it? All of that stuff. So that's what we'll build out. And this stuff's going to happen later on during the process. But just so you know what it is and why it's in there. Do you want to add anything to that, Stan? Uh, no, not really. Um, like, yeah, so I think everyone got that pretty clear. These last three slides you're not going to be doing. We're going to be doing those over week two and week three together uh, probably roadmap you'll do that week 12 actually to be fair because we would have prototyped a bunch of content um it's just all this other stuff that you're going to work on um over time over the and just week, is there any question like so now you're going to go away and do this are you all happy to do that do you understand what you've got to do are there any questions because if you come up to me on 10 minutes time and say what about this i'm going to be cross Um, when I was doing this, because I did homework prior, because I'm a SWAT, um, I found it really helpful to look at what I don't stand for for those first three slides, like look in opposition to myself to then figure out what I do stand for, because it can be kind of hard to come up with like adjectives about yourself, but if you're like, well, I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that, then it gets smaller and easier to deal with. Bad. That was a really good piece of advice. You you won. You've won. Yeah, that was that's a really good thing. Like if you can't decide what it is, then decide what it is. All right. All right. Um, Over to you, Stanley. Okay. So cool. I'll wrap us up because I've got a bit of homework to do. But there's um there's um quick thing. So just to reiterate, everything that's you've been you've seen today, the the deck that we've gone through today, I'm gonna send it out to everyone. Um you'll have a second, you'll get sent two decks. So you'll get sent the one we went through today and then a separate PowerPoint, which is just a strategy template. So you can download that and then edit your own one and keep it for yourself and put all your answers into that as you go along. So you're going to build out the deck as you go so that you know you have it straight away. Um, but uh, Aaron asked, do we just bring it to the next session or do we put it into the chat? The thing is that chat, if you want help or questions on as you go through this throughout the week please chuck it in um kimberly asked the question of going like are we going to get challenged on our ideas that's a good place to get challenged before next week so if you've got some things and you're like guys i'm not really sure like this is my mission statement what do you think put it in and we'll workshop it you're not alone this is a group project we're doing this together um i got 30 something bloody staff in this so and they, they have to do it to help you so just ask them for help and they will jump in and help um but all of this, like you'll help each other.
other. There is stuff like what we learned going through this last time, the cohort that went through, they taught each other just as much as we taught them, actually. They taught us just as much as we taught them. So there's so much wealth of knowledge sitting in this room. Like, you're all successful. You all do your thing. So please, like, if you're not sure about something, chuck it into the chat and other people will see it. Okay. I'm going to quickly go back to my side. I've got one other piece of homework for you to do, which you're all going to get annoyed at me for because I've also just given you this massive other thing. But I'm going to do this because from, like, the thing I learned last time in the last cohort is we didn't make content or put people into uncomfortable positions early enough, and it took us so long to get that um, flywheel spinning, you know? And it wasn't until, like, the second to last week or something like that where I was like, oh, you're going to post that video, Roman, and just sat there in silence until he posted it because he didn't do it otherwise, right? And so we, and like, the guys will know they're laughing, they get it, they were there for it in the first cohort. But this time, we're going to get into the uncomfortable really early because actually the one of the biggest lessons... I think you'll learn throughout this process is that it's really hard to put out content when you're new to it or you're not used to doing it a lot. And it's really hard to put yourself out there online, both your brand and you. And so we're going to start those straight away. Um, and so I'll quickly share my screen again and I'll show you what we're going to do, mm -hmm. which too bad you'll signed up for it and paid me money. So you're going to do it. Um, <laughs> the first homework, we're going to look at LinkedIn. Some of you are aren't even trying to do it right now. But you know what? I don't really care because the reason we're going to do LinkedIn is it's a real hard platform to do because of the professional tone to it. It has this, like, people have this idea that, like, everyone on it is so serious and they're all, like, you know, professionals and doing all this stuff. But actually, like, it's not that place, but you will feel that way. So I'm going to get us to, like, set up our LinkedIn and I want us to start doing some activity on it straight away some of you are doing linkedin personal branding as part of this anyway so this is perfect for you so from day one you're going to get into it but the first thing we're going to do is set up your profile so there's some simple stuff to set up your profile um don't overcook it you don't need to do like there's so much stuff to do in your profile to make it right i think there's only four things that um that really matter um a fifth one too actually i just realized that I, I missed it out which is headline um i should put that in now before i screw this up um is headline and that is that uh, these five things so profile photo you need a good profile photo on there like delete the one that you got done at a wedding in 2012 and like go get a new one just get your iphone i'll find a clip on youtube and put in the resources for how to take a selfie on your camera on your phone if you need to um, just good, good, put a nice clear photo up that when people see you, they can recognize you, right? That's what you want from it. You're sharing. Oh, am I still sharing? No. Oh. Shit. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm not sharing, you guys yell out if I'm just talking to nothing. Um, there we go. Okay, good. You didn't see all my blunders. Um, profile photo. Headline. Your headline is essentially your job title or like it's like on LinkedIn, it's the it'll have your name and then right underneath it will be this headline. Um, and my advice, it's best to put saying on that how you help people or if LinkedIn's not a primary platform for you, you can just put your job title. You know, you can just put owner of or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, profile banner. This is this picture here. So. Uh, you can quickly make one of these up. There's some default ones that you can choose from LinkedIn. That's better than nothing. Just do anything but the the, the no profile banner. Um, you can use Adobe Express to make one of these if you want, or Canva, or whatever you might want to do. Uh, but have a profile banner, your about section, which is your bio. So just a simple bio. Don't go in crazy depth with it. Use ChatGPT if you need to to write it. Um, also, don't speak in third person because that's weird. Like, just speak in first person. Like, speak as if it's you writing it, not some someone else. Like, you're not all these, like, you're not the president. Um, just write in first person. And then also your featured section is quite a good thing because you can put links to websites and other posts and content, which is this, this little square down here. So that's the first thing. I'm going to show you a profile real quick, but um, that's your homework. I just want everyone to do this over the next week. It won't take long. It'll take you five, 10 minutes. If you've already done it, you already got a good profile. Don't worry about it. Nice homework. Not needing to do it. The second thing you're going to do, though, is you're going to connect with 50 new people. You're going to send 50 connection requests to people. This is the, this is the scary stuff that we're going to do for a lot of you who don't want to do it. You're going to go find your target audience because you're already figuring that out. 
and you're going to find them on LinkedIn and you're going to add them. Now, probably only 20 of them will accept your connection request, but that's okay. Follow everyone and then send them a connection request, which I'll show you how to do shortly. And that's the homework. And I can get I can get data on this, so you can't lie to me, so I can find this out. So you all have to do it. If you don't do it, then you're on mute for the whole second session. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But but we do want everyone to do it. Okay, this is the uncomfortable part. Start figuring out how these platforms work and start being on it. So 50 people. Now, my advice: do this over the week. Do 10 a day for five days. Don't do all 50 at once. LinkedIn will be like, oh my God, this person's a hacker. They're, we're going to block their account and not let them do anything else. So just like, because because you guys have all gone from doing hardly any activity, some of you no activity, some of you don't have a LinkedIn presence, to going out and connecting with 50 people, it's going to get a bit dicey. My advice is to connect with your target audience and uh, if you like, just some people in your industry that you know that maybe you're not already connected to, to help round out your network. And the reason for doing that is that we're going to eventually post on LinkedIn, even though you don't necessarily want to build a brand there, some of you, the reason we're going to do it, we're going to use it as a testing ground for our ideas and our writing skills. As we get into creating content, story structure is one of the most important parts, hence the two weeks that we've allocated towards story structure. And writing and story is a real easy way to learn that. So we're going to be doing that and posting on LinkedIn. We're going to see how that idea performs on the platform and how people interact with it. And then we can use that to like dictate other content, okay? So to start that, we need 50 new connections. So that's everyone's homework. I'm just going to quickly stop my sharing and I'm before I ask getting any questions and I'm going to go and show you real quick um, LinkedIn. I might just zoom in a little bit. Okay. So on, on LinkedIn, um, you've got uh, a couple of things for how to find people. The first thing is going to be in your search bar. And let's just say for me, it was owner. Like I wanted to find owners of businesses. So I would go in here and I would type owner. Yeah. And I would hit enter. And then I can click on people in this top left hand corner here. And now it's giving me all the people who have owner in there as, as their job title. So then I can go, okay, well, I don't want 24 million results, so I might just go Auckland and hit show results. Okay, that's cut us down to 31,000. I might only want to look at people who are second connections with me. So what that means, first, second, third, first means you're connected with them. So you probably don't want to find those people because you already are connected. Second means that you know someone who knows them. So Joni's connected to me, so she's a second connection to all my connections that she's not connected to, right? So there's one degree of separation. The third plus, there's two or three layers of connections between us. Some people um, don't have any relevance because there's no direct path between, between them. So I might just look at second connections because I'm going, well, I at least want people who know the people I know, right? And then there are a few other things you can do. You can go like actively hiring if they're looking for someone, what current company they're working at. So let's say I'm targeting ASB. I want to talk to people only at ASB. I don't know. Account-based marketers might need that. Um, I can also do connections of. So you guys could go, oh, I only want to connect with people who are connections with Stan. And I could jump in here and add. And add uh, like I could do Joni. Um, I could add that in. Um, or they could follow a creator. Um, or I could get people from different schools, right? And then I can go show results. And then it's going to 14 people. So there's 14 people that I could connect with that fit all that criteria, okay? So it's a way of drilling down and finding some target audience. It's not always going to work great for some of the people that you've got. Um, but make some assumptions. Like there are certain jobs that over-index in gender. So if you're looking for females or males, there are certain job types that over-index in a certain thing. And if you need to figure out what those are. You could probably Google it and it'll tell you. Um, but there are certain things like that, or there are like like blue collar workers versus white collar workers or IT professionals and stuff. There's different things that you could look at from an industry perspective as well. Um, and you can also do in here, if anyone knows like Boolean, Boolean, Boolean programming, um, you can do what's called like logic. So you can do and um, CEO. So I put the hand in, and it asks. Oh, I'm going to do it for me now. People, hang on. It needs to be. There you go. Hey. 
No, no, let's go. Let's go. Um, well, it's not going, is it? Anyway, I might need to fix it. It works enough for you. It works enough to, to figure it out. So anyway, that's how you connect with people. I want 50 connections for today uh, for this thing. And then I also want you to go to your profile and just jazz it up. So you got your, as you can see at the top here, that's your profile banner, your profile photo, your headline. So this is my headline here, just sitting underneath um, my name, your about section here, and then um, the featured section. So those are the things that you're going to do. Don't worry about the rest. There's lots else in there. You can do it if you want. There's your experience, which is essentially a CV, education, and all that. Um, I'm not too fussed if you do that. It's just these other ones. You can always have a look at ours if you want to um, figure it out. But on your profile, you'll have a little thing here with edit. Where you can just click, and then you can go through and edit all your stuff as well. I'll put a, um, I'll find some videos that walk you through it anyway. But if you've got any questions about that, just let me know and ask. Um, shouldn't take you too long. And if you really don't want to make a profile banner, you can go into change photo and there's a bunch here that you can just choose. I mean, Stop a lot of them are like, you know, yeah. you might just want to pick one of these top Trinity ones. That are around. One. Yeah, yeah, you might want to choose some of those. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, okay. okay so cool. So homework's pretty clear, pretty simple. Any questions about it? No. Yeah. Hey, can I just say? Can I just say one? Th oh, sorry. Who's got a question? Hello. Yeah. Good. Um. Yeah. So my one question is. Um. I got a question and follow question. Uh. One question is, does following people like that are in this call count as a new connection? And <laughs> if so, and if so, does everyone have LinkedIn that <laughs> that could drop it, does, it in Teams? It does. Don, that, that's that's twenty one already. So. Yeah, plus all the people sitting in that office over there. Yeah. So actually on that, guys, a real smart thing to do that the team did last time is once you all get access to the team's channel, put all your links into all your um, social media accounts in the main channel and in the, in the team's channel that I showed you at the beginning. Put all your links in and like your Instagrams, your TikToks, your LinkedIn's, whatever it might be. And those of us who want to follow can follow where we follow. Um, on LinkedIn, just make it a connection request, not just a follow. Okay, so that is a, there is a difference to that. You can some people you can just follow, um, and some people you can. Uh, and but you want to send a connection request. Okay, we want it to be mutual. Um, I've got one thing to say, which is probably really important for you all. If you can't do it. Do it wrong. Just get it wrong because people are really fucking good at telling you when it's wrong. You can either not do it and it won't happen or you can just suck it up, do it really wrong and then ask for help across the board. Like just don't sit there and not do anything. Just do it really wrong because you'll get it done faster if you do it wrong than not doing it. Yeah, that's great advice. Do it wrong and chuck it in the chat and then we'll give you the... Yeah, just do it wrong right. and chuck it in the chat and we'll, and we'll do it. So what was that, Sam? Connection messages. Stan, do you want to? Yeah, I oh, think what was yes. Question, sorry. Can. Do we write connection messages to everyone in our uh, new connections? Question. Yeah, good question. So you can. Um, it's okay not to. Uh, it does increase your acceptance rate, so people will more likely accept it if someone sent a connection request. In my in my practice, I would typically um, just send something real simple. Just. No, nothing too fancy like even linkedin even does like ai generated ones now when you first do it i would just do the ai generated one or do nothing like i get 10 or so connection requests a day of people just no there's no message i still connect with them so it's really up to you and what you want to do if you really want to connect with someone who's like maybe a little bit famous or like a, is really random like so out of your like out of your network you might want to give a reason why to it like you know Hey, Stan, really want to connect with you because you look amazing and awesome and I want to be your friend. You might want to say something like that, you know, when you connect. Shut with up. So, yeah. Um, I think I work, I don't know, <laughs> on LinkedIn most of the day, every day. And for all our clients, I only send uh, connection messages when they are keen to book a meeting or have a coffee with someone or it's someone that is high up. Uh, we don't definitely don't send connection messages to everyone and that doesn't stop them from accepting as well so mm -hmm. you're still connecting with people if you send the messages or not yeah 
Yeah, nice, Vanessa. Okay, guys, we're gonna um we got two minutes left. Um, I do need to jump off um right on ten thirty, and I'm gonna keep it pretty on like for this twelve weeks. We're gonna keep it pretty on time. So if everyone can like get on just a minute or two early every every week, just so we can kick off at the time, so we're not waiting. Because a lot of us on here, there's like forty something of us on. We're five minute late. There's like two hundred and twenty five minutes of wasted time. Right? Let's just like have, have respect for everyone else. Be just a minute or two early, so we're all ready. We can make sure our text work, and then we can go. And then at ten thirty a.m. for you guys can all do your own time zone. That's six thirty for me. Um, we're gonna we're gonna call a hard stop and, and hit end call. Um, and then any questions, anything of like that, send through in the in the chat. I'm gonna send a follow up email today with everything that I said I'd give you. So you'll get that in the next few hours, probably five or six hours, and you'll get that um, with everything that we said we're gonna give you. And the other thing that I, I haven't mentioned this before, but not to the new people in the group, it's really good to just regroup yourself on Thursday afternoon, evening, just to go over what you went through. So when you get to the meeting, you're ready and you're going to make the most out of it. Otherwise, you might waste some time because you might be a bit unclear or you won't. You couldn't remember something. It's just really worth checking in with yourself or your group just to go. This is what we've got. to. This is what we achieved. We've done our jobs. This is what we're going to do tomorrow. Are we ready? It just helps. It will really help. Cool. OK, thanks, team. Awesome, team. I'll see you in the team's chat. See you all there.